my learner question is, how do I determine the effect on the voltmeter across the battery if the resistance on the circuit changes? Well, thanks Nonatandu for that question. Let's just repeat it for our viewers at home. How do I determine the effect on the voltmeter across the battery if the resistance of the circuit changes? Now, first off, we need to go and take a look at what's going to happen to our resistance in a series and a parallel circuit. Now, we do know that if we add more resistors in series, then the total resistance of the circuit will actually increase. And we saw that last week as well when we've taken a look at adding up the resistors in a series circuit. So our total is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. Now, if we have a parallel circuit though, then if we add more resistors in parallel, the total resistance will decrease instead of increase. Now, let's go and take a look at an example. Now, last week we've actually touched on this example, and this is where we said that should we have, for example, a 1 ohm resistor, a 2 ohm resistor, and a 3 ohm resistor connected in parallel, we'll be making use of our formula that's given for us to calculate this parallel combination. And that's 1 over R parallel is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Now, should we be doing it for our specific example, we're going to end up with 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. This gives us 11 divided by 6. But this is not my final answer. In order to get to the final answer, I'll still need to invert the 1 over R parallel so that I end up having R parallel over 1. And that means we're going to take the 11 over 6 and invert it to 6 divided by 11, which should end up giving you 0 0.55 ohms. Now it should make a little bit more sense to you. The next part on this slide says that the total parallel resistance is smaller than the smallest individual resistor connected in parallel. So we had three resistors in parallel. In this case, one ohm was the smallest one. And when we added all three of them up, we still ended up with a smaller resistance than that combined. And that's by 0 0.55 ohms. Good, so we can see we add more resistors in parallel the total resistance will actually decrease. Now let's go and apply this to what will happen to some of our quantities that we would find in our circuit. Now first off, one of the very first quantities we're going to take a look at is my total resistance. Followed by that, we're going to take a look at the total current, V lost, and then V external. Now let me just briefly explain to you again what V lost and V external actually refers to. And later on when we do internal resistance, we're going to take a look at that again. Now my EMF, and that's equal to my V external plus V lost is actually what we end up getting from our battery or our cell. Now our battery or cell has got a specific potential difference that it can deliver. Now in this case, some of that potential difference will actually be lost due to internal resistance. The remaining part of this potential difference will then be delivered to the rest of the circuit. Now let's go and apply this to an, just a general idea of an example of what could happen. Now, if my total resistance increased, let's go and say that it's increased, it's going to have an effect on my current. And this specific effect is going to be a decrease in my current. And we know that's going to decrease because we have potential difference is equal to current times resistance. That's coming from my Ohm's law. But seeing that we're working here with total potential difference and total resistance and current, we're thus working with EMF. So EMF is actually going to be equal to current times total resistance. Now this EMF is going to stay constant for a particular battery. Now unless we change the battery, the EMF will thus remain the same throughout the operation of this circuit. Now if we went and increased the resistance, our current would need to decrease to compensate for this increase so that we end up again with the same EMF. Now let's see what effect will that have on V lost. V lost, on the other hand, is also going to, in this case, decrease. Now remember, we still have potential differences equal to current times resistance. But because we talk about V lost, which is now due to internal resistance, we end up having current times internal resistance, which is now seen as a small letter R. Now just like in the case with my EMF, my EMF we said will stay the same if we use the same battery, so the internal resistance will also stay the same if you're going to be using the same battery. So seeing that my internal resistance stays the same, we noted that the current decreased, that means my V lost is also going to decrease because they will now have a directly proportional relationship to each other. Now the last quantity that we're going to take a look at is my V external. 
and the effect on my V external here is going to be an increase. And that's due to the fact, as we've seen previously, that EMF is equal to V external plus V lost. Remember, EMF is going to stay the same, but my V lost has actually decreased. So my V external would need to increase to compensate for this loss in my V lost. Now let's apply this just to a quick example to see how does it work. Now in this case, they ask you, a connecting wire is connected between points O and P. How will this affect the reading on the voltmeter? Now there's our circuit. We'll note though that as the current will start running, that it's gonna suddenly have two options. It can either now go to our circuit here, yeah, that's OP, that's our new connected wire, or through the remainder part of the circuit where there is a 3,6 ohm resistor. Now that's pretty much the same as having, in this case, two toll gates. The one is gonna ask you no money, and the next one is gonna ask you three rand 60. Now obviously, all the cars is rather gonna go through the circuit the part rather of the path that is going to ask you no money. So that's how come all of the current also is rather going to end up going through our top connecting wire which has no resistance in it rather than the bottom wire where there is a resistor. That actually means if you take a look at your circuit that the bottom part is going to be completely be cut out and all of the current then just runs through our top connecting wire. So originally we had a total resistance in the circuit of 3,6 ohm plus 6 ohm, which ends up giving us 9,6 ohms. But seeing that none of the current is going to travel through the bottom part of the circuit, our new total resistance is now only 6 ohms. So that means my total resistance has actually decreased. Now let's quickly go and take a look at those four quantities again. Starting off with my total resistance, my current, V lost and V external. So seeing the total resistance according to us have decreased from 9.6 to 6 ohms, that would mean the current is actually going to end up increasing. We know that because EMF is equal to, in this case, our current times total resistance. The EMF stayed the same because we've used the same battery, but the total resistance does decrease, causing the current to compensate for that decrease so that we can end up with the same EMF, and thus that meant an increase in the current. Now that's going to mean an increase in also to my V lost, reason being, because we've got at the end V lost equal to current times internal resistance, and our internal resistance also stays the same because we've still got the same battery or cell, that means an increase in my current would also increase the V lost. And lastly, that effect on V external is actually going to be a decrease because we have EMF equal to V external multiply our V lost. Sorry, rather, it's not multiply, that's my mistake plus V lost, and in this case, because EMF still stays the same, V lost have increased, but that would mean V external would need to compensate for this, and that actually means it's going to decrease. Okay, so you can see that whatever happened to our total is also going to happen to V external, and whatever happened to the current will also happen to V lost. So always keep those four quantities in that specific order into consideration. My question is, what causes internal resistance? Well, that's a very good question, Nungeli. Let's answer that. She asked for our viewers at home, what causes internal resistance? Okay, now internal resistance, as we've seen up till this point, that's the resistance found within the battery or the cell. And that's indicated by a symbol, which is a small letter R. On the other hand, our external resistance, that is resistance outside of the cell, that is going to be indicated by capital letter R. Now let's just take a look at an example of a circuit. Now when they indicate internal resistance for you, they're going to indicate it just like a normal resistor, but you'll note that it's going to be next to the cell or the battery, and it's going to be enclosed inside a dotted block there. So this tells me that it's going to refer only to my internal resistance, where is the remainder part of my resistance on the outside of this is then seen as my external resistance. Okay, now to actually explain what is internal resistance, we're going to be taking a closer look to the inside of a cell. Now we know that a cell is made up of a positive and a negative. The short line is the negative and the long line is the positive. Now, current that flows through the circuit is actually charges that move past in a certain point of time. Now, these charges 
is made up of rather electrons. And these electrons I'm going to indicate with a small letter E and you'll note that it's got a negative charge because all electrons are negatively charged. Now apart from conventional current as you've seen in the games which is actually going from positive to negative, electron flow is actually starting on the negative side and going all the way to the positive part. Now let's see why does that actually happen. Our electron is negatively charged, so is the negative side of the battery. There would be repulsion between these two. That will actually then cause the electron to move away from the negative side of the battery, but because there is attraction between a positive and a negative, this electron is then attracted towards the positive side. Now note though that every time the bat this electron passes through a battery or a cell, it's going to receive in this case an amount of energy. And this energy will be used up or given to the connecting wires or any other components inside the circuit. Now I'm going to indicate this for you as a bag full of energy. So there's my electron, it's receiving a bag full of energy and as we said as it passes through some of the components it's actually going to be donating some of the energy. So by the time that it reaches the end of the circuit it's going to have an empty bag. Now the problem actually comes in where this electron that do not get used up, it actually needs to be transported to the negative part of the cell, would actually then need to cross towards a negative. Now needless to say negative and negative will end up repelling each other. So in order to overcome this repulsion, this electron would need to do work. And to do work, it's going to need energy. So when it passed the positive part here of the cell, it received a full bag of energy. But it's going to need to use some of this energy to overcome the repulsion and actually move towards the negative where it can then go over to the other side and then move away again from the negative. So that means it doesn't start with a full bag of energy anymore. It's going to start off with less energy than originally actually anticipated because some of this energy is now lost due to internal resistance and that's the movement of the negative electron towards the negative part of the cell. Good, so that means at the stop part, that energy that's not there anymore is due to V lost. The remainder part of this energy is what we're going to have as the potential difference then given off to the remainder part of the circuit. And this is then what we know as internal resistance. Yes,